Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Shield Arms S15 magazine. Not long ago, Glock introduced the Glock 43, which was, a, as you know, a single stack, nine millimeter, a subcompact handgun, if you wanna put it in that caliber. And later on, they introduced the Glock 48. And while both these guns fill a desire for certain shooters, especially those who are kind of preferential to Glock as a brand, for a subcompact, ultra concealable, 9mm handgun, both of them are offered in a single stack, which significantly reduces capacity, although I'm sure the single stack reasoning was to increase concealment, so there's always trade-offs, right? Well, the problem uh, that some people run into with those two guns is there's other guns from other manufacturers that have a very similar footprint and negligible size differences with an increased capacity. One of the biggest problems, I don't know if you want to use the problem, I'm going to use the word problem. One of the biggest problems I've always had with the Glock guns, if you will, is the fact that the magazines are polymer, and that's kind of rare to polymer frame guns. Generally, a lot of guns out there, even those with polymer frames, have metal magazines, which allows for a thinner overall wall on the magazine and increased capacity. But Glock never seemed to have any interest, at least that I'm aware of, of producing a metal magazine. Uh, and I believe that they'll probably just continue producing the polymer magazines because that's what Glock is known for. So. In a situation like that, we either have to accept the trade-offs or rely on a third-party company to produce an aftermarket solution that's going to give us everything that we want in that particular gun. Enter Shield Arms and their S15 magazine. For the Glock 43X and the Glock 48, I now have an OEM length uh, flush floor plate, if you will, magazine that increases capacity. So instead of 10 rounds, I'm getting 15 in an OEM floor plate. And if I want to, I can add an addition to the magazine, say my secondary spare magazine, and now I have 20 rounds of ammunition. This is significant because now I'm able to increase capacity in the gun, and I'm also getting a metal magazine, which all things being equal, in my experience, generally can handle more varied conditions and still drop free from the gun. Glocks, if you get a little bit of grime or grit in them, the polymer magazines tend to stick a little bit more when attempting to drop the gun from side lock to reload it. So having a metal magazine, I get a little bit increased, or I should say decreased friction on the reload regardless of what conditions the gun's being used in. I'll be honest with you, the 43X and the 43, 48, Glock 43X, Glock 48, didn't really hold my interest, mainly because of a reduced capacity, but also because just my lifestyle, my body size, I'm able to conceal a much larger gun. Even when I dress up, for some people, the only time they go with a mouse gun or a pocket gun or, or a subcompact is when they have to wear a suit or something like that. Me, I wear a three-piece suit. I can still rock concealment. Uh, Full-size gun because the vest helps conceal and the appendix carry position very well. But there are still those rare occasions where I do need to carry a smaller firearm. I would probably forego a 43X or a 48 based on the reduced capacity with other options being available. With the S15 magazines, looking at it initially, I was like, okay, great. Now I can get that 43X or that 48 footprint with the same capacity I would get out of, say, a Glock 19. Of course, capacity is not everything. The magazine has to be reliable. And something we've seen from aftermarket or third-party magazine companies, there's plenty of them out there to this day that have built their reputation on mediocrity. They make a magazine, and that magazine may be okay for range use, but it's not something you should literally stake your life on. Quite a few companies out there literally produce very, very cheap stamp metal magazines and they appeal to someone who's very budget-minded and then that person ends up purchasing the magazine and is only kind of relegating it to range use because the magazine is just not reliable. Or, in certain cases, if you're a little bit more top thinking, you can be like, I'm gonna buy this crap magazine on purpose because I know it's gonna cause malfunctions and I like to practice clearing those. I didn't want that from the Shield Arms magazines. Having a relationship with Shield Arms previous to this, uh, using their uh, their base plates and even uh, one of their firearms, their, uh, their folding, 9mm PCC, I expected good things for the magazine, but as always, I was going to try to remain objective as possible when using the mags. 
Because I was going to be doing a review uh, on an optic that needed to be mounted on a Glock 48, I had a perfect opportunity to get a lot of rounds through the Shield Arms uh, S15 magazines. Not only the OEM, but also a few of their OEM with the Plus 5 extensions. So, the review process, if you're not familiar, any review I do, and pretty much any review I do that's firearms related, it's going to be 2,000 rounds. So over a handful of magazines, I've cycled 2,000 rounds through these magazines. Not each individual magazine got 2,000 rounds loaded into it, of course. But I did use these magazines in, in various conditions uh, with various types of ammunition. Not only, you know, uh, ball ammunition, but also hollow points. Why that is important is because some magazines will feed ball ammunition all day long, but you put certain length hollow points in them, and they don't like to feed them reliably into whatever gun we're talking about. In this case, the Glock 48. Not an issue that I had. Uh, in addition to that 2,000 round review process, the gun was also used twice, two separate occasions, by students in red dot handgun classes because they had, they personally owned a Glock 48, but they didn't have the S15 mag, so I loaned the magazines to the student. My class is usually a two day red dot handgun class, is a thousand round course of fire. This happened twice. So now we're up to a, approximately 4,000 rounds, cycled through uh, the small collection of S15 magazines I have. And then, in addition to that, just my own personal use for practice with the Glock 48. So conservatively, uh, since January of 2020, I've got close to 7,000 rounds through this collection of magazines on two guns uh, over that time period. Now, that's not the life expectancy of the magazine. However, it is a considerably large sample size for performance. We can talk about the bad up front and it's not much, but it is something significant of something you're not aware of. Metal magazines uh, and the Shield S15 magazines I found to be no different can be a little cumbersome to load, a little difficult to load when brand new. Uh, there's a relationship between follower and body and spring that just kind of has to be, I don't want to use the term, but it's going to fit the best broken in. I use a Maglula loader because I like to save my thumbs. When you load 500 rounds worth of magazines, you tend to want to purchase something besides thumbs to load the mags. So that's something you got to use because uh, when these things are brand new, you get 12 or 13 rounds in them, and those last couple rounds could be very, very difficult to get in, at least initially. After a while, they do break in nicely. Of course, the concern with that is if it broke in, does that mean the spring is now too weak to effectively push the follower up and feed ammunition reliably? And that's definitely not the case. Clearly, the good about the magazine is the increased capacity. Uh, I can take a Glock 48, which is a single stack gun, but now I can introduce a double stack magazine into it. Still single fed, but a, a double, uh, double stack magazine. And now I have 15 rounds of ammunition in a flush floor plate and 20 rounds of ammunition if I want to use a plus five adapter. What that gives me is very comparable performance, not only magazine capacity wise, but also overall gun, if we're talking specifically about the 48, to a Glock 19. So I can get the same performance I'd expect out of a Glock 19 as far as magazine capacity, barrel length, sight radius, things like that, if those are what you're interested in, but in a much smaller, or slimmer, I should say, footprint for concealability. And I think that's huge. Over the time I've been using these magazines, they've been used in the sun, they've been used in the rain, they've been used in the snow, they've been dropped on concrete, they've been dropped on grass, on gravel, on sand, on moon dust, all sorts of different terrains, all sorts of different environments, and they have worked reliably. Uh, during the entire time, I've had two situations where on brand new mags, this was very early on when I first started using them, the gun would kind of stutter going forward, but it would still go into battery. So I haven't had any feeding issues, and what's more important than that, and this, some, this is something some people don't think about, at slide lock, I haven't had any over insertion issues. Sometimes with uh, aftermarket magazines, with the slide lock to the rear, you can actually over insert the magazine into the gun, which complicates closing the slide, makes the slide very difficult to close, or you've got to take the magazine out, reinsert it, and try again, because the tolerances or dimensions are slightly off between the actual magazine release and the catch that's on the body of the magazine. So you can bypass it just enough to cause it to hang up. Not something I had happen on the S15 magazine. Uh, these things have been consistently reliable and they've been durable as I would expect a magazine to be because what a magazine needs to do is feed all the ammunition that's in it and then it needs to be able to drop free and then it needs to be able to take that drop. It needs to be able to hit whatever surface I happen to be standing on and not break, fly apart, or otherwise become unusable for the next time I want to load it and use it. Of course, this is a magazine so it's a little bit non-traditional in the way that I generally conduct my reviews, if you will. Uh, I didn't do a traditional burn down. However, the, 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 these magazines were run as I would expect them to be run, which means slow fire, 
fast fire, quick reloads, slow reloads, administrative reloads, hand loading, Maglula loading, all types of different ammunitions. All pretty much exclusively on the Glock 48, although I did have a student borrow some of these when he wanted to run his Glock 43X in a class for a brief period of time. So they work. Uh, they're kind of boring in their reliability, which is what I want. I want something to be so unremarkably reliable that uh, it just becomes expected and accepted that it's going to function uh, reliably. And that's actually something that's kind of hard to say for an aftermarket magazine for a third party gun. So if Shield Arms was making their own gun and this was their magazine, you'd expect the relationship to work correctly. Making a magazine for someone else's design is not as straightforward as some people want it to be and the engineering that has to go into magazine design must be infuriating to the people who actually design them. So I have to say that Shield Arms got it right and it's a very simple solution to a problem that Glock could correct but they're probably not going to and that problem being stop making your magazines out of polymer, start making them out of metal because that gives you increased capacity and reduced friction on the magazine regardless of what situation you happen to be using it in. So if I'm going to use a Glock 48, it's going to have a Shield Arms S15 magazine in it. And for anybody who's going to ask me, like, hey, what can I do? Uh, should I should I go with an aftermarket magazine for this Glock 48? The answer is going to be yes. And the answer is going to be the Shield S15 magazine. I'm Eric Count with Stage Dynamics. Train accordingly.